Hello, welcome to day two of our 14 day challenge. If you've stumbled across this video by chance, do go ahead and start back at day one or go one step further and start at the video, your first piano lesson. I'll link to it right here. If you've already worked through your first piano lesson and day one of the challenge, then be sure to grab your workbook in the description below so you can follow along and let's get right to work. So today we're starting with a very similar C major improvisation that we've been doing, but today we're going to kind of, we're going to be a little bit more conscious with our timing. Today we're working in what we call three, four time, which means that we're still counting quarter notes as our beat, but we only have three beats per measure now. And that just means that we don't have a break between the hands. Like we did yesterday, I'm going to play through the pattern three times. I'm going to name the notes the first time through, and I would encourage you to keep saying them through every repetition. We're going to maybe go just a teensy bit faster than we did yesterday. Um, but as always, feel free to watch once and then to pause the video and to do it on your own or to watch and then go back and play along with me. You always have those options available to you. So we're starting with the right hand thumb on C, the left hand fifth finger on E. You can start in any octave. I'm starting on middle C and the C right below that, but it's kind of dealer's choice here. Then we're starting with C, E, G, C, E, G, A, C, E, E, C, E, F, A, C, F, A, C, G, B, D, G, B, D, to finish with a C otherwise it just kind of hangs there if we play a C at the very end that it's kind of clear okay that's it from there we've had a nice little warm-up we've kind of reviewed all of the keys that we have on the piano all of the notes in the musical alphabet and now we're going to really intentionally be looking for these patterns on the keys so like yesterday we're going to do three note patterns and I'm going to say them for you. I want you to try to find them and then I'll show you where they are on the keys. Um, if you think you need more time, press pause, find the notes and then see the answer. And yesterday we did ascending patterns, so C, D, E, F, G, A. Today we're flipping those upside down. We're going to be doing descending patterns today. So our first pattern is C, B, A. As always, feel free to hit pause and to find those everywhere on the piano. Then our next pattern is E, D, C. And our last pattern for today is A, G, F. Let me know in the comments below if it's getting easier to find the notes, if you feel like you're finding them faster, or if you think you've got it mastered already, that you don't need to, you can skip over that part of the video from now on. Um, do let me know how that's progressing. I look forward to hearing how it's going. It's time for everybody's favorite. It's time for the rhythm drills. Today, we're dealing with three, four time. I've mentioned this before today. We're going to see it a few more times today. 3-4 time just means that we have three beats per measure. We're still counting the quarter notes as our main beat. And it has a little bit of a different feel than 4-4 four, four time. It swings a bit more. A lot of dances are in 3-4 time or in some sort of triple meter. With our first rhythm drill, we're going to be counting the note values as we go through. And then in the second rhythm drill, we'll do this metric counting that we're counting each measure instead of the individual notes. But for now, we're starting with direct note values. So let's dive right in. Just review really quickly. So we're starting 
we have quarter notes, we have a half note with a quarter note, a half note with a quarter note, and a dotted half note, which of course is three beats at the, at the very end of the example. So let's give it a try. One, ready, go. One, one, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, three. I promise you, I know these exercises seem silly, it maybe seems a bit childish to be doing all this clapping, but you're doing so much for your sense of rhythm and for just developing this rhythmic style of playing. I can't stress enough how helpful these are. And the other thing is, yesterday I kind of let the cat out on the bag. We're always doing a kind of random rhythm exercise and then basically every day of the challenge we're going to be doing a rhythm drill that's almost always directly related to one of the pieces or songs that we're working on. So in addition to really supporting your sense of rhythm, it's also helping you make progress on the pieces that we're learning. So in this one, I mentioned before, we're going to count metrically. So instead of counting one, two, one, one, two, one, now we're going to be counting one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. So let's give that a try together. I'll count us in. One, ready, go. One, two, three, 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 hold, two, three. Yesterday when we worked on Amazing Grace, we talked about ties, but just in case, for whatever reason you missed it, this curved line underneath the last two notes means that we're tying those together. And so instead of three beats and three beats, we're playing once and holding for six beats total. Today we have a new melody. We're learning the melody from Offenbach's Barcarolle. It's, it's from one of his very famous operas. And a Barcarolle is basically a Venetian gondola song. So it has kind of this lilting back and forth. Today we've already talked about 3-4 time. This piece is also in 3-4 time, so we're really hammering home that topic today. And we're getting into this feel of 3-4 time. It's a little bit, it sways a bit more than 4-4 four, four time does. So hopefully you're enjoying that also. And let's look at our hand position. You can start with your third finger on E like we had for Ode to Joy. You could also slide over to your second finger. It's maybe not quite as comfortable to play that way, but it does, I really don't want us to build this association of three is always on E. We don't want to get too tied into one hand position. So if you want to start on the second finger, that's a really good exercise for getting used to that. Like Ode to Joy, we have this available as pre-reading notes and the regular reading notes on the grand staff. You can kind of take your pick or you can try first one and then the other and you'll see how it goes. Today, I'm again going to start with the left hand because like I've said before, the left hand tends to get a bit neglected. We also tend to neglect the bass clap a little bit and I'm very in favor of trying to offset those, not prejudices, but kind of bad habits as pianists. I will go ahead and start with the third finger on E, but again, it's your choice how you want to do that. And we've already looked through the rhythm. You've already had your example of that. We've already looked at ties. So the rhythm should be pretty straightforward. And now we're just focusing on the notes. We, in a second, are going to be talking more about skips or thirds. Yesterday we talked about steps, seconds. So for, for skips, we have the same type of interchangeable terminology there. Um, and we do have some of those happening in this. When you're using the pre-reading score, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's just you skip over one finger and to, to get to the correct note. I'll show you the first bars here. E, two, F, F, two, E, E, D, F, F, two, E, E, D, F, F, two, E, E, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the first row. Just like Ode to Joy, the second row is exactly like the first, except for the very end, because we want to kind of take this different turns so that we get home at the end of a song. E, two, F, F, two, E, E, D, F, F, two, E, E, D, F, F, two, E, C, two, three, four, five, six. And then for the 
right hand, you're going to have exactly the same patterns. Here you do need to start with the third finger because we need to be able to make it down to C. And if you start with the second finger, then, then you're going to end up with a little bit of a finger twister there. Maybe this time, since you've already learned it in the left hand and the patterns are all the same, the fingering is a little bit different, but maybe this time you can try to join me the first time through. I'll go a little bit slower, just in case you choose to do that. One, ready, go. E, two. F, F, two. E, E, D. F, F, two. E, E, D. F, F, two. E, E, two, three, four, five, six. E, two. You actually could start with the second finger and then the at the very end the thumb is just going to have to hop over to the C. You can test that out if you want also. Like I said, it's good to get out of this, this kind of square idea of three is E, one is C, two is D, and so on. We do want to be really flexible with which fingers we're playing which notes with. Um, so the, the sooner you start doing exercises like that, the, the better it's going to be for your progress in the long run. Moving right along to our reading section for today, we're reviewing our landmark notes for starters. Uh, let's just compare the notes that we have on the screen with the notes that we have on the piano really fast. So this is our middle C. This is the one that we have two of in the middle. And we have our bass clef F, the F right below middle C, and we have treble clef G, the G right above middle C. We really want to just brand these in. I want it burned into your eye. I want you to be able to recognize them anytime you see them, instant recognition. And obviously, I've mentioned before, the colors are great. Please color them for as long as you need to. But then at some point, we also need to really get used to recognizing them without any sort of visual aid. The note in and of itself is our visual aid. So let's do a quick quiz of the, the notes that we've learned already. So still staying with our landmark notes, we have... And it's always good to play these on the piano also so that you're really combining the position on the staff with the position on the piano. Here we have G. Then we have our bass clef F. Then, middle C. We're really quickly going to review our steps, our seconds. So here, our first note is middle C, and we step down to B. Here, we're starting on bass clef F, and stepping up to G. This one, our first note is G, and we step down to F. Here, our first note isn't a landmark note, but if you don't recognize the first note immediately, use the landmark note as your guide, and then you recognize it's E, F. Here, middle C to D. I'm gonna start going faster on you now. G, to A, F down to E, and that's all of these notes. You know all of these on the piano and you know all of them on the staff. And now we're going to fill in some of these holes because we have a couple of gaps in our knowledge here. Of course, you can use logical reasoning to figure out what they are, but we want to be able to recognize them also. So today we're learning a new interval. I mentioned this when we were looking at the Barker rule. Um, we're learning about skips or thirds. Now visually, I want you to remember that skips or thirds are always from one line to the next line, and we just stack them up like that or from one space to the next space. So steps are always one of each, one line to the very next space, or one space to the very next line. 
Thirds, skips are always space, 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 or line, 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 line. And much like the seconds, we can play them at the same time. They don't look as funky as the seconds, so just kind of memorize how they look. Of course, just like we did with the steps, let's combine that with our skips. So, something that I also want you to remember, it's great to be able to see the note and instantly be able to name it. I want you to be able to do that too, but it's also very valuable to know, okay, that's F and that's a skip up. If you don't immediately know that it's F, A, it doesn't really matter because you still know the notes. Of course, I want you to be able to recognize them instantly, especially long run. That's what we're working towards. But for starters, if you focus on playing and then naming, that's also totally fine. Okay, landmark, F, skip down to D. And here, just like we've talked about before, we don't always start right on our landmark notes, but we see that the second note is our landmark F, where it's skipped below that, that means we have D, F. Here we have middle C, a skip down from C is A, and then a skip up from middle C with the right hand is E. Then of course, we have our triple clef G, down a skip, G, skip over F to E. And then G, up a skip, G, we skip over the A, we play the B. And why is it called a third? Um, just like the seconds, we have our first note, second note, third note. That's just how we're measuring the distance. Then, if you want to start looking for skips or thirds, in your music, it's really good to go through and just to circle them so that you can find them more quickly visually. So here, we've learned this piece already. You know that it starts on E. We have E, F, F, E, E, D. And then here we have line to a line, which means, line to a different line, otherwise it's a repetition, uh, which means that's our first skip. And then it goes on, it goes on. We have the same pattern here, E, D, F, and then we have a couple more that pop up in the next row as well. So you can absolutely circle those in your music. That's not cheating. That's just teaching your eye what to look for when you're looking at a score. And finally, let's wrap up with just a little bit of practice on Amazing Grace. Today, there's nothing new that we're adding to it. We just want to keep practicing it so that we keep making progress with this beautiful song. And that's always an option, by the way. Just because in the challenge videos, I'm not showing you a piece anymore doesn't mean that you're not welcome to keep playing it on your own and to kind of incorporate it into your practicing. If you feel like there's still room for growth on those, which we're only on day two, of course there's room for growth, then absolutely keep, keep playing the ones that we've learned on days prior and that's something that you can apply throughout every single day of the challenge. Here, maybe you want to play along also, so I'll count us in. And this is a little bit different because we start with something that's called a pickup. We're going to talk about a pickup in a few days. Don't worry about what it means. But when I count us in, it's going to be one, two, three, one, two. Then after the second two, you play the first note, the first G. One, two, three, one. Congratulations, that's it for day two. As always, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, give this video a like if you've learned something, and share this challenge with someone who might want to learn alongside you. Until tomorrow, happy practicing.